Cars with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tato, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hi! The stage from Red Rock to Hilton on the last stretch of its journey from St. Louis was still a few miles away from its destination. As it swayed and bumped along the narrow trail, Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger who had boarded the stage at Red Rock, glanced now and then at the only other passenger in the coach, a well-dressed young lady whose golden hair and fair complexion attracted Dan's attention. She had been dozing when Dan got on, but now she was awake. And from time to time, she looked at Dan and half smiled. Finally, she spoke. You seem quite young to be traveling alone. Oh, I, I live out this way. I'm used to riding the stage, ma'am. Really? I should think your mother would worry about you. My mother isn't alive. I'm an orphan. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, that's all right. I'm well taken care of. Oh, I'm glad of that. Do you live in Hilton? Not exactly. I'm staying here there for a while with friends. Oh, by the way, my name is Edna Murray. I'm going out to visit my uncle at the Circle Bar Ranch. I know where that is. My name is Dan Reed. Well, Dan, I hope we'll meet again after we get to Red Rock. Do you know my uncle, Clem Murray? No, ma'am, but I've heard of him. The Circle Bar is a big spread, one of the biggest out this way. Really? I didn't know that, though I did know it was quite prosperous. Uh, going to stay here long, Miss Murray? That depends upon Uncle Clem. I'd like to stay in the West permanently, if possible. Golly, I'll bet he'll be glad to have you at the ranch. <laughs> the way you say that is almost a compliment, Dan. Well, if I were your uncle, I'd want you to stay. Actually, Clem Murray isn't my uncle. You see, I was an orphan, too, and Uncle Clem's brother adopted me and raised me as his own. Oh, I see. Uncle Clem has a daughter of his own named Harriet. I met her once when we were much younger, but, well, we just didn't get along at all. Harriet is a year or two older than I am. Gosh, I don't see how she couldn't like you, Miss Murray. <laughs> you have a nice way of saying things, Dan. I'd like to have you as a friend, and I do hope you'll try to come and see me while I'm with Uncle Clem. Golly, I sure will. Look, we're going over the, the bridge there. There's a creek at the edge of town. Oh, then we're almost there. Yes. In just a minute, we'll be at the stage stop. Will someone meet you, Miss Murray? Oh, I hope so. I telegraphed I was coming today. If they don't, I'll find a way to get you to the ranch. Thank you, Dan. That's very nice of you. Here we are. Uh, is Edna Murray in there? 
Uncle Clem, how are you? Fine, fine. Climb out, Edna. Harriet's waiting in the buckboard over yonder. All right. Goodbye, Dan. Be sure to come out and see me. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I'm so glad to get here. Well, you sure have grown into a beauty, Edna. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, Uncle Clem, none of that. Get out, Dan, and meet Uncle Clem. Right. Glad to meet you, sir. Oh, yeah. You come all the way from St. Louis, too, boy? Oh, no, sir. I got on at Red Rock. Oh, well, I... <laughs> I thought maybe Edna was bringing along her latest boyfriend with her. Oh, golly, no. <laughs> If Dan were several years older, Uncle Clem, I might consider him as a boyfriend. He's especially nice. Gosh. Thanks, Miss Murray. Maybe I can help with your baggage. Well, say, now, that's right nice of you, son. Here's the young lady's trunk coming down. Uh, let her come, driver. Now, watch it. I got it. Ah, here's a carpet bag. That's all she brought. I'll take the carpet bag to the buckboard. Oh, thank you, Dan. I reckon I can handle this trunk all right. Oh, there's Harry from the buckboard right over yonder. Let's go. <laughs> now, I'll sling that bag on, Dan. Yes, sir. Well, Harriet, here's your cousin Edna. How do you do, Edna? Hello, cousin Harriet. I'm awfully glad to see you. Thank you. Edna, I'd prefer you don't call me Cousin Harriet. We really aren't cousins, you know. Uh, of course, Harriet. Just as you wish. Oh, I, I want you to meet a young friend of mine, Dan Reed. We met on the stage. How do you do, Miss Murray? Of course, in this case, it's just a boy, Edna. But you should be more careful about taking up with everyone you meet. Uh, get in, please. I'm tired of waiting. Now you get off on your high horse, Harriet. Here, let me help you, Edna. Thank you, Uncle Clem. I guess we can all ride comfortable on the front seat. Well, one of us should ride in back. But never mind this time. Edna, I think you're old enough now to call Dad just Clem. Calling him Uncle is childish. Don't you think so? Maybe it is, but it's become a habit, that's all. And it's a habit I like, too. You call me Uncle all you want. Because I am your uncle by adoption anyway. Well... Let's get on our way. So long, Daniel. Goodbye, Dan. Come and see me. I'll come out soon, Miss Edna. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get up there. Get up now. Later that afternoon, Dan Reed arrived at the camp which he shared in the nearby hills with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, ho, Victor. Ho, boy. Easy, fellas. Well, Dan, it's good to have you back. Oh, I'm glad to be back, sir. How, oh, Dan? You have a good time? Yes, I did, Tonto. I enjoy visiting Pop Hendricks. Oh, I, I met a nice girl coming back on the stage. A girl from St. Louis named Edna Murray. Golly, she was pretty. <laughs> I see. How old is this pretty girl, Dan? Oh, she's quite old, sir. About 20 at least. Oh, I'm not like hear you say that, Dan. <laughs> I guess 20 does seem old to a boy of Dan's age. Uh, where was the young lady going, Dan? She got off at Hilton. And she's out here to visit her uncle at the Circle Bar Ranch. He isn't really her uncle. She was adopted years ago by Clem Murray's brother in St. Louis. I see. I've heard of Clem Murray only at the Circle Bar. I think he's a widower. He has a daughter named Harriet. I don't like her at all. Oh, really? Where did you meet her? In town, sir. Mr. Murray and his daughter came to meet Miss Edna. Miss Harriet was kind of, well, unfriendly to the girl from St. Louis and said not to call her cousin or her father uncle. Mr. Murray said he didn't mind being called uncle, though. From what you say, Harriet Murray doesn't seem to have very good manners. Mm, that's right. She looks cross and mean to me. I, I don't like her at all. So you said before. I hope she doesn't spoil Edna Murray's visit at the ranch. Golly, I, I thought of that, too. Miss Edna asked me to come out there to see her. Do you think it'd be all right, sir? I don't see why not, Dan, if you want to go. Gee, I, I think I'll ride out there tomorrow, then. Anyway, I, I want her to look at Victor. Does she like horses? I'm sure she'll like Victor. And he'll like her, too, I'll bet. Anyway, I, I'll go out there tomorrow afternoon and let them get acquainted. The following afternoon, Dan left the camp on Victor and rode to the Circle Bar Ranch to see Edna Murray. As Dan turned off the trail onto the entrance road to the ranch, a pleasant-faced young man on horseback turned in beside him. Easy, boy. Easy there. Easy. Hello there, son. 
I hope you're not going in here to pay court to Miss Harriet. She's sort of on my list. Oh, no, sir. I'm not going in to see Miss Harriet. I'm going to see the girl from St. Louis, Miss Edna. She's all sort of a cousin to Miss Harriet. Oh, I didn't know anyone was here visiting. My name's Ned Hadley from the Bar Y over yonder. Mine's Dan Reed. Well, someday when my ranch prospers, I hope to ask Miss Harriet to, well, to be my wife. <laughs> she don't hanker to marry up with a poor man like I am right now. Gosh, why does that make any difference? Oh, that's something I can't figure out, Dean. Maybe, though, she'll change her mind someday. I hope so, Mr. Hadley. Ah, here we are. Oh, there. Oh, 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 Good afternoon, Miss Harriet. I guess you met Dan, didn't you? Oh, yes, we've met. Oh, that's right. You're the boy who helped with the baggage in town, aren't you? Yes, sir. Miss Edna said I could come out to visit her, so I thought... <laughs> oh, poor Edna. I guess even a young boy like you is better than no company at all. She's in the kitchen helping the cook right now. I didn't know you had a visitor, Harriet, till Dan mentioned your cousin. Oh, Edna's just a poor relation, Ned. In fact, she's not really a relation at all. My uncle in St. Louis adopted her. My horse is already over at the corral, Ned. Shall we start on a ride? Well, maybe you're... That is, Miss Edna would like to go along. Oh, don't be silly. I'm sure she doesn't know the first thing about riding. Or anything else, for that matter. Except housework, perhaps. I bet she can do lots of things. <laughs> well, she has one champion, anyway. You can go around to the back door, boy. Edna's back there in the kitchen, as I said before. Come on, Ned. Let's go for that ride. So long, Dan. Be seeing you again. Bye, Mr. Hadley. Golly, I don't like her at all. I'll go around back now to see Miss Edna. Dan, I saw you come around the side of the house. I'm awfully glad to see you. Thanks, Miss Edna. Now, that's Miss Harriet and Mr. Hadley from the next ranch going out for a horseback ride. Uh, do you ride, ma'am? No, Dan, I don't. I'm a little afraid to try. Gosh, I... I'd be glad to teach you. You could learn to ride on Victor. He's very gentle. Well, all right. When do we start? Golly, right now, if you say so. All right, come on. I'm sure you'll be a very good teacher, Dan. I know you'll learn quickly. In no time at all, you'll be a better rider than Miss Harriet is, I bet. Almost a month, Dan visited the Circle Bar Ranch and gave riding lessons to Edna Murray. One afternoon after he had left the camp, the Lone Ranger spoke to Tonto. Dan says Miss Murray has learned to ride very well, Tonto. Ah. They go riding every afternoon up along the river. I'd like to see for myself just how well Dan has taught her. Well, maybe if we go up there, we see him. Yes, we'll ride up that way. Come on. Big fella. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Come on, Phil. Get him up, Scout. Meantime, Dan and Edna followed the trail along the river. She was riding one of the ranch horses, and Dan watched proudly as he noted how easily she rode and how well she handled the horse. Gosh, Miss Edna, you sure did learn to ride well. Thanks to you, Dan. Oh, we haven't come this far before. I haven't seen that wooden bridge up there over the river. That bridge isn't safe. The supports are all rotted. Look, someone's riding this way down the trail. Oh, it, it's Harriet and Mr. Hadley. Maybe they'll join they us. They see us. But they've turned off the trail. Yes. I'm sorry Harriet feels that way about me. I, I was hoping Look, that... they're heading for that old bridge. We've got to stop them. It won't hold in the water's deep there. Oh. Hey, wait! Come back! Oh, they're riding onto the bridge. We've got to stop them. If we don't, they'll crash into the water. Come on, Victor. Get up there! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Riding down trail, Harriet Murray saw Edna and Dan in the distance. She spoke sharply to Ned Hatley. Ned, there comes Edna and she has that boy with her. Say, I thought you told me she didn't ride. Oh, never mind that now. I, I don't want to meet them. We'll turn aside and go across that bridge over there. Now, look here, Harriet. No use acting that way. Won't do us any harm to ride. Well, you can stay and meet them if you like, but I'm going. Get up there. Now, come along, then. Get up. Hey, wait. That boy is yelling to us. Let's hurry. Get up. That bridge, is it safe? Don't look any too strong. If you're afraid, go back with them. Get up there. I'll stick with you, Harriet. Better take it easy. I don't think this bridge will hold us. Harriet, the bridge has given way under us. Dan and Edna were still several hundred yards away when they heard the bridge crashing. The bridge, it fell with them. Come on, Victor. Oh, how terrible. And Harriet can't swim. Get up, boy. Get up, Victor. I see Harriet down there. Oh, oh, oh there. there. Mr. Hadley's clinging to a plank. He seems to be hurt. I'll try to help. Hastily, Dan and Edna removed their boots and jackets. Then, for a moment, they paused on the edge of the river and looked out over the water. Can you swim well, Dan? Yes, sir. Good, so can I. You see what you can do for Ned. I know Harriet can't swim a stroke. I'll go and try to bring her in. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had taught Dan Reed to be an expert swimmer. And as Dan and Edna swam toward Harriet and Hadley, the boy noticed that Edna, too, was an expert in the water. Within a few minutes, they reached the two victims of the bridge crash. Edna gave her attention to Harriet, who was struggling desperately to stay on the surface, while Dan went to Hadley. Gosh, he's unconscious. He must be hurt. I'll grab that log and try to hold him up. Help! Help! Let, let go! Oh, you're dragging me under. I have to use force. I, I had to hit her, Dan. I, I can make it to shore now, I think. Can you? No. No, I... He's too much for me. I'll have to have help or he'll slip away for good. Oh, hold on, Dan. Try to hold on. I, I'll get Harriet to safety that maybe I, I can come out to help you. you. You've got to hold on. You just have to. Meanwhile, a short distance away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been riding behind Dan and Edna. They saw and heard what happened, and the Lone Ranger spoke quickly. The other two went down with the bridge, Tonto. Then the girl dived in to help. Montelli! Get him up, Stout! Me see him. Friend the Dan's go to other girl. Yes, and Dan's trying to help the man close over home. Oh, easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Easy. Blonde Scott. girl's bringing the other one to shore, Tonto. Help them out of the water. I'll go to Dan and the man. Ah, Hit. He helps. Hold on, Dan. I'm coming to help. Keep his head above water. He's unconscious. He must have hit his head. It's too heavy for me. I'll take him in. Can you make it to shore, Dan? Yes, yes, I'll be all right. Then get going. I'll bring in Hadley. On the shore, Tottle waited until Edna was close enough with Harriet. Then he waded in and helped bring them out. Get the girl to shore. Thanks. I I had to hit her to keep her from pulling me under. You plenty good swimmer. Uh, put the girl down here. Oh, my. I'm almost exhausted. Oh, but Dan and Mr. Hadley, I have to... No, no, you not get up. Oh. Then be all right. Oh. Now, here come Dan and friend bring in man. Oh, I thought they were gone. And... Me go help with young fella. Here, need help now? Uh, He'll be all right. Got a slight blow on the head. We'll carry him there to the others. All right, put him here, Tonto. Uh, why, why, he's mad. He's I... the friend I told you about, Miss Edna. Oh, oh yes. Oh, we're so thankful you came along when you did. It was a narrow escape for them both. They're very lucky you and Dan could swim so well. Harriet, well, well she didn't want to meet us, so they turned off the trail and started uh, across the bridge. She's coming, too, now. Yes, she'll be all right. Oh, uh, Please, the water. Oh, you're safe now, Harriet. It's all right. You, you struck me out there in the water. If you hadn't done that, I could have saved myself. It was easy to see you couldn't you, swim. You keep out of this, boy. And I just wanted to... Masked man? What, what is he doing here? 
He saved Ned Hadley's life. Isn't that enough? And Miss Edna saved yours. Uh, you ought to be grateful. Harriet. Harriet, I... Uh, girl, all right. And you all right, too. I, I warned her that the bridge might not be safe. Oh, that's it. Blame me, Ned Hadley. I know that you didn't make a move to help me. Instead, you let Edna act have Edna. Ruined. She's all right. Yes, I'm all right, Mr. Hadley. And, and you saved Harriet? Yes, she did. Golly, she sure can swim. Uh, that mask man and the Indian. They're friends. The mask man brought you in, Ned. Uh, I mean, Mr. Hadley. Dan and I tried to warn both of you about the bridge, but you paid no attention. Harriet insisted on going across. She didn't want to meet you and the boy. I know. Oh, Ned Hadley, you're despicable. I don't know why I put up with you coming around anyway. Yes, I've been sort of loco for doing it at that. Well, this is no place to talk. I think we ought to get to the ranch as quickly as possible and, and change into dry clothing. Yes, we can double up on the horses. The other two horses swam to shore and are probably on the way to the ranch right now. All right, let's get going. With Harriet riding with Edna and Ned riding with Dan, the group went to the Circle Bar Ranch. As they pulled up in front of the ranch house, they saw a rider coming at a fast pace. Who's it? Oh, 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 Someone coming in a hurry. It's one of the men from my place. Oh, hey, oh. Ned, you better come quick. The ranch is on fire. On fire, my ranch? Yeah. I'll use Edna's horse. Men are doing all they can to stop it. We'll go with you, Hadley. Dan, you stay here. Let's get going, fellow. One, two, three. Don't stop. Yeah. Hurry, Harriet. Get down. Oh, I suppose I have to. Get up there. There's a big headway, Hadley. Better try to save the livestock and let the house go. Come on, we get to the barn. The barn had just begun to burn, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto, with Ned's help, made trip after trip into the smoke-filled building to lead out the horses. In spite of the mask, Hadley's men followed the Lone Ranger's orders, and though the buildings were a total loss, the livestock were saved. Finally, after an hour of futile effort, Ned stood back and spoke to the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Well... Guess that about wipes me out. Thanks to you, though, I saved the stock. That'll bring in a little money. I'm very sorry about your loss, Hadley. There wasn't much could be done to save the building. Mm, that's right. I'm going to ride over to the Circle Bar Ranch and talk to Harriet. Guess we said some hasty words this afternoon. Have to take the horse back, too. Yes, you were all under tension. I don't know, I'll ride part of the way with you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Monsilver! Get him up, A short time later, Ned arrived at the Circle Bar and was in the living room talking to Harriet. Well, Harriet, I lost about everything in the fire except the livestock. Thanks to Dan's two friends. Edna went with the boy and Dad for the back trail to see the damage. They should be back soon. I'm glad they aren't here right now. I, I wanted to talk to you. Really? As far as I can see, there's nothing to say, Ned. Frankly, we are not suited for each other. So anything you might have to say wouldn't make any difference. Uh, I'm glad you feel that way, Harriet. Glad? Yes, you see, I, I wanted to part friends. But I came over to say it was all a mistake... You and I are going together, I mean. Well, Ned Hadley, of all things. But you just said that you... <laughs> oh, it's really very funny. Before you were barely getting along at that way. But now you're really dead broke. You don't think for a minute that I'd ever consider uh, marriage. Harriet, we couldn't help but hear the ruckus you're making as we came up the porch. Dan and I shouldn't have come in. I... Why not? Seems to me Dan's coming around here has meant a lot to all of us. Harriet, you were wrong about one thing. Telling Ned off like you did. Well, it seems like Harriet don't want me around. and Well, we just didn't get along anyway, like I come to tell her. Only she told me first. Oh, you mean you two are through going together, eh? Well, maybe that'll give you a chance with my niece, Edna. Dad, of all the things to say, I'm going to my room. Uncle Clem, you, you shouldn't really have joked with Harriet like that. Well, I wasn't joking, Edna. 
I've noticed the way Ned's been watching you since you've been here. Well, now, Mr. Murray, if Dan wouldn't think I was trying to cut him out... (laughs) Oh, golly, no. Now, just a minute. After all, I have something to say about all this. Of course, I'm sort of broke, and if you... You don't think I'm good enough to come calling on you, Miss Edna. Oh, Ned, I... Well, I'd be happy to have you call on me. It's just that I'm embarrassed to have Uncle Clem say that... I was thinking of it long before he said anything. You've got to believe that, Edna. What about it? Oh, of course, Ned. I I want you to... I mean, I... Gosh! Oh, (laughs) God! That's more like it. It seems like Dan, with the help of those friends of his you spoke of, has sort of played Cupid around here. Someday, Edna, when I get on my feet again, maybe... Why, uh, no use putting things off, Ned. You know, someday, Edna will own half this ranch. And I think maybe you and me can get together tonight and make some sort of a deal for your land and what little livestock you have. Say, that's great. Oh, Uncle Clay. Oh, I'll get the best of the bargain. Don't worry. Ned, you're lucky. Edna was willing to let you come courting even when she thought she didn't have a cent. Yes, you two will get along fine. Gosh, everything has sure turned out just about right. By the way, that masked man did so much for us, and I never did get to know who he is. Oh, I can tell you that, Ned. Dan told me he's known as the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.